Hi, this is Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. In this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts in review of a product you might not have seen before. It's called Topaz Sharpen AI. If you've ever had any images that weren't quite as sharp as you'd like them to be, whether that's due from camera shake or missed focus, this product has the ability to enhance the sharpness or appeared sharpness of those images. But does it work as well as they say? Let's dig in and take a look for ourselves. I've pre-selected a few images where I had focus problems or they were blurry due to subject movement or camera movement and applied the Topaz Sharpen AI to them already. So Topaz is a software company. They make multiple different products. Sharpen is one of the products that they make. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the ones that I've applied it to already. And you can see that this one, the exposure was a 60th of a second and they were walking. So if I zoom in on this, let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's go to 100%. So if we zoom in on this image, you can see that it is indeed blurry. So the people have moved a little bit or the camera was moving or a combination of both. It looks like the background is sharper than they are. So take a look at this image after I ran it through Topaz AI. There is the edited version. Now I did this one in Photoshop and I'll show you that workflow. You can use Topaz as a standalone or Sharpen as a standalone product uh, or as a plugin for Lightroom or Photoshop. The recommended workflow that I would suggest is I bring my images into Lightroom, open them in Photoshop as a smart object and I'll show you that and then apply Topaz Sharpen AI as a smart filter. That means that you could go back anytime and re-edit those settings that you did in Sharpen, or you can even apply it as a mask so you're only sharpening part of the image. In this case, I would only want to sharpen the people and not the background. Let's take a look at the images side by side. Okay, so now you can really see the difference. Let me just get that centered. Okay, the one on the right is the original or before image and the one on the left is, has been run through Sharpen. Okay, so you can definitely see that it has done a really good job on this particular image. Let's look at another example. To make it easier to view the before and after, I've switched it around so the before is now on the left in this example. So you can see here the exposure was a 250th of a second, which should be plenty uh, of fast enough shutter speed to eliminate camera shake, but here the subject was moving, he was dancing. So there's quite a bit of subject movement here. And I actually don't mind it in this image. I kind of like it because it shows uh, speed and movement. But if you wanted it to be a little bit sharper, take a look at the after image, which is on the right. And you can definitely see there is an enhanced sharpness through the face and through these feathers right here on his um, regalia. So it's working really well on these types of images. There's one more example. Again, you can see at a 500th of a second. So the shutter speed was not the problem, subject movement, and it's done a really good job. So let's take a look at an example that is a different type of blur. In this before image on the left, it was shot with a 20 mil, 23 millimeter lens at 110 um, of the 110th of a second. So it should be enough to be sharp, but I think I honestly just missed the focus. So if we zoom in here, you can see that the writing on the bottle is not sharp in this left before image. So I ran it through Topaz Sharpen AI and you can see that it's picked up some of the writing over here and sharpened that. And it sharpened this to some degree, but it didn't really pick up a lot of the details here. And it's kind of picking up some artifacts. So it's perhaps due to the fact that this this writing on the bottle isn't super sharp to begin with. It's a bit of a, you know, a paint look. So it's looked for where to enhance the details. And it hasn't done as good a job on this image. So that's why I feel like it on the images that it works on, it does a really good job. And I tried the same um, type of focusing in Photoshop. I tried unsharp mask. I tried smart sharpen and I even tried the high pass filter as an adjustment layer and none of them did the same job as the Topaz Sharpen AI. This was another example where it didn't do quite a good, as good of a job. Let me zoom in here and you can see that it has indeed sharpened, 
But what it's also done is it's created some artifacts around the outside here. Let me just see if I can zoom in a bit more. So I'm zooming into 200% here, so we're quite zoomed in. And you can see that it's done a reasonable job on the face and it does look sharper, but it's created this like weird sort of halo artifact around the edges. And that's partly due to the fact that it just was too far gone in terms of I missed the focus. Because if we look at the original, you can see that the, the ground behind them is quite a bit sharper. And that's where it's actually focused and sharpened more so than the people, right? So the program is only as good as the material that you put in. And I think it does have limitations. The focus was so far out here that it can only do so much. So I think if you go in with expectations of, for example, this one is only slightly out of focus, right? So if we zoom in here, and I'm gonna do that at 100%. If we zoom in here, you can see that the original, I was pretty close with the focus. I had focused on the back eye of this fellow and not the front eye. So I do have some focus in the picture, but not the right focus. And here it's done a really good job of enhancing both eyes. And you can see that his whiskers are a lot sharper. And you can see that the cloth of his um, turban, I guess you'd call it, is a lot sharper and pulled out a lot of the detail, including this cloth here as well as part of his clothing, right? So what it has done is enhanced this material back here so this is where I go back to, if you do this as a Photoshop smart filter, you can mask this out so that you can apply the sharpening where you want it and not on the background and not on this fabric here, right? So it's done a really good job of an image that was slightly out of focus, not as good a job on one that was really out of focus. And if we look at this one here, we can see that I missed the focus and it's blurry because of the shutter speed at a 40th of a second. And it, it's tried its best, but she's got a double image on her face. So it's tried to sharpen it, but now she's kind of got double eyes and double mouths and it's not really working that well because the image is too far gone. So if you go in with the expectations of, okay, I have an image that's really close. The focus is not quite right, or it's a little bit blurry. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised and have some really good results. If you go in expecting the program to perform magic on an image that is really blurry and out of focus, I think you're going to be disappointed. But if you set your sights to something reasonable, I think you're going to be impressed. So let me show you the workflow. This one was the one that I did in Photoshop and I'll zoom in to show you the before and after, after Topaz. And it's done a pretty decent job. You can see that I either missed the focus or it's slightly blurry because maybe he moved or the camera moved and his face is just not as sharp as it could be. You can see in this after image, what it's done is it's picked up a lot of sharpness in his shirt, which is great because that really makes the image, when you have details, fine details like that, you can kind of trick the eye into thinking that it is sharp. Right? And look at his beard. You can see that the hairs on the beard, his eyebrows and his eyelashes have been sharpened quite a bit. And again, if the eyes look sharp in a picture, you can probably get away with even printing this at a normal or a nominal size, maybe up to eight by 10 before it starts to break down. Okay, so I think it has a potential to really save some images that uh, works close, but you missed. One thing that I do feel needs to be said here is that I don't recommend using a program like Topaz Sharpen AI as a crutch to save images as opposed to getting it right in the camera. So if you're constantly getting blurry images, buying a software to sharpen them isn't the best solution. Go back and look at your camera technique or your settings, or perhaps maybe your focus was a little bit off. Either way, practice a little bit more in camera and with your photography technique to try and eliminate blurry images as much as possible. But if you have some past images that you think are close and you'd like to apply this software and see if you can save them, then by all means, go ahead and do so. But try not to use software as a crutch and get into the mentality of I'll fix it later 
do work on your camera technique as well. So let me show you the workflow that I recommend for this product and how the interface for Topaz Sharpen AI works. I recommend if you use Lightroom and Photoshop that you open the image from Lightroom if you're a Lightroom user. If you're not, open it directly into Photoshop. So if you're in Lightroom, just right click your image and choose Edit In and then open as Smart Object in Photoshop. That will open the image as on a layer as a Smart Object. So I've already done that. Let me just hop over to Photoshop. Once you're inside of Photoshop, you will see a little icon like this. It looks in the bottom corner. It looks like a page with a corner turned. That indicates that this is a smart object layer. So any filters that you to apply to it are editable later. If you don't open it as a smart object and you just open it directly into Photoshop and apply the filter, you won't have the ability to come back and change the settings later. So I've already done that. You can see that it says Topaz Sharpen AI right down here below the image as a new smart filter. Okay, see where it says smart filters, Topaz Sharpen AI. So because I've already done some settings, by double clicking this down at the bottom here, you can either click the name or this little setting here and it will open up the plugin again. Okay, so it tells me that I'm evoking a plugin and it opens the Topaz Sharpen AI. If you've not used the product before, you will see this little tour and you can go through it and it will give you some idea of how to use the product. If you don't wanna see it, just close that. So now that we've got it opened, a couple of things that I noticed about Topaz Sharpen is that it is really memory intensive. So it takes quite a while to apply the preview and to apply the actual settings once you hit apply down in the bottom right hand corner over here. Right? But it's pretty simple. As you can see this interface here, you've really only got two or three sliders. If you're not adding any grain, which I'm not, you've really only got two sliders and three different choices. So you can choose from sharpen, stabilize, or focus. So sharpen is just generally, if you already have an image that's sharp and you want to apply normal sharpening. Stabilize is for an image that has some camera shake or camera blur. And focus is for if you've missed the focus point in the image, okay? You can use the AI mode, turn on to auto, and, the and this program is going to choose for you. It's going to detect what it thinks is wrong with the image and apply it. So let me just move the preview over to we can see his face and you'll see kind of how long it takes for this preview to update because I've got auto update preview turned on. You could turn that off because I do find that it takes quite a while to apply. You could see that it took a few seconds while I was talking. So if you're happy with the settings that it's applying, you can see his beard is being affected and his eyes. You can just hit apply and away you go, or you can increase the sharpness, or you could try one of the other settings. I'm going to try focus and see if that one does any better. You can see once again, it's generating the preview, so it's taken a little bit of time. And now there's definitely an improvement here on the facial sharpness, okay? You can try the auto settings here as well, or just slide the sliders yourself and wait for the update to happen again. So I'm going to set that to auto and see if it does anything. Didn't really change it all that much. So I'm gonna hit apply and I'm just going to time how long it takes to apply this filter and head back to Photoshop but I'm gonna speed it up so you don't have to wait. Just to give you an idea, right? Before I do that, I'm gonna show you my settings on my Mac. You can see that I've got Mac Catalina, which is a fairly new operating system. I'm not running the new Big Sur yet. And I've got a brand new MacBook Pro that I just got a couple of months ago and a fairly fast processor and lots of memory. So I've got 64 gigs of memory. And even with those specs and an eight gig graphics card, you can see here, if this is all Greek to you, don't worry about it. Just know that I have a fairly new Mac with a high speed processor and lots of RAM and a, and a high end graphics card and it still runs pretty slow on my computer. So if you have an older computer or slower um, processor or lesser specs, expect this program to take quite a while to apply. And if you go through the FAQs on this program, it does tell you that it's going to take a while because it's doing a lot of stuff in the back end um, using the AI technology. So it's going to take a bit of time to do its job properly. So just go grab a coffee and come back. 
So I'm going to hit apply and let's see how long it takes on my computer. Okay, so we're back in Photoshop and now the filter has been applied. And you can see that I've previously applied a mask to this because what would happen if I applied it to the whole image is it's also going to sharpen and apply to the background. So let me just turn the mask off and you can see when I apply it to the background, let me zoom in to 100%, you can see that it makes these weird sort of artifacts. So that's why I masked it so it didn't apply to the background. The other thing that was happening was it was sharpening parts of his face like over here where the light is sort of hitting his cheek and I didn't really like what it was doing there so I partially masked off that. Okay, so you can see the difference without the mask and with the mask. I could go a little bit farther as well because you can see that it's still over sharpening just a bit in this area and I don't want to draw attention here. I probably will mask off this little area so I'll just do a, I'll just do a little quick mask here because it's making this part on his cheek look more like a, a scar than a birthmark. So I'm just gonna unmask that and do a little bit more on this area so it doesn't look so crunchy. So I'm just using a soft brush and masking a little bit. I'm not gonna explain how to do masking. If you don't know how to do that, I'll post a video for you so you can learn about masking in Photoshop and layers, okay? just like that. So when you're done, you just save it and it will head back into Lightroom. So you can see there's the image back in Lightroom as a Photoshop document. And if you want to re-edit that at any time, you just right click and choose edit in. But this time you choose edit in Photoshop, whatever version you have, and choose edit original. That means that it will open the layered Photoshop file that you just saved and your smart filter with the Topaz Sharpen AI is there so you can readjust any of the settings or redo the mask or edit or add anything else you want to it. Quick summary of Topaz Sharpen AI is pros, I would say that it works really, really well on certain images. If you set your expectations for images that are slightly out of focus or slightly blurry, it does a fantastic job better than anything that I tried in Photoshop. I tried, as I mentioned, the Unsmart filter, Smart Sharpen, and the High Pass filter, and none did as good a job on this image and a couple of others that I tried it on as the Topaz Sharpen AI did. So for the images that it works on, it works better than anything else that I have at my disposal in Photoshop. Definitely better than the general sharpening inside Lightroom as well. And the pros, um, far outweigh the cons in my opinion. The only cons that I could find to this program are that it runs fairly slowly, but if you set it and go get a beverage and come back, that's not a big deal. And you know that that's the case, you can wait. And it's a little bit on the pricey side. So if it's a software that you feel you need in your workflow, spend that extra money and add it as a plugin for your digital workflow inside of Photoshop and Lightroom. I hope that helps you get a better understanding of what Topaz Sharpen AI could do for your images and whether or not it's something that you want to add to your arsenal. Take care, until next time.